Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, welcome back and welcome, advanced listeners, to Class 10. Welcome to the double digits, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Well, here we are in class 10. And I'm going to start today with a, a question that I received from a student. And we, we do make our best effort to answer them all. You will certainly get an answer, a personal email answer from our team of teachers who are there for that purpose, to handle your questions because we care. But I'm also, so far, I've been answer, uh, responding to, I think, all the questions. So if you have a question, please get online, www.vaugenengles.com, and log into your account, and you can send us your questions there. Of course, you have to be a subscriber to the Vaugan Ingles course, but... Um, and if you're not a subscriber yet, make sure you get on there and subscribe to be a part of this. So uh, I'm going to start with a question from Vicente, who is an advanced student from Madrid, who asks about the difference between think of and think about, and also to hear of and to hear from. So this is interesting, uh, and, and not, not specifically related to material that we've been discussing in the last few classes, but an interesting question nonetheless. So I welcome your questions. And Vicente, I hope this answer that I can give you now satisfies you. Basically, when we're talking about the, 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 these phrasal verbs, when we're talking about the phrasal verbs with think, think of, and think about, we essentially use think of to mean imagine. Imagine. Think of something different. Think of something, to, to imagine something, imagining a possibility. And think about means to consider, to be, to be stuck in thought on some topic. I'm considering. I'm thinking about my dinner because I'm hungry. Whenever I'm hungry, I start thinking about food, okay? Where I think of is more to imagine. So to think of implies creativity. We also have the phrasal verb to think up, which is, which is even stronger to, towards invention. Think up, we have to think up a solution. But if we, we could also say we have to think of a solution. I'm sure there's one out there, but we have to choose one with thought. We have to decide on, on a solution by thinking of one, thinking of one that will work, okay? Whereas to think about is sort of to ponder in thought or to consider Okay, they're thinking about selling their house. It means they're considering it, and they're thinking of what they could do with the money. So they're they have different options, right? They're thinking of, they're imagining all these wonderful things that they could do with the money. So they're considering selling the house and imagining what they could do with the money. In some cases, the difference is really very slight, and in others, uh, it's more appropriate. You know, one form is more appropriate than the others, but 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 they can be very similar at times. So it's important to listen and for advanced students like yourself to read in English every day and you will absorb these often subtle differences, okay? Now, you also asked about hear of, like, oh, we, have, 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 you heard of, have you heard of this thing called uh, the Internet? <laughs> Has oído hablar de? Have you heard of something? Have you heard of this and that? So it's essentially the same as to hear about. Did you hear about the new restaurant down the street? There's this new restaurant down there. Have you heard about it? Have you heard of it? Have you heard about it? Have you heard of it? Those are essentially the same. Okay. Whereas to hear from, to hear from someone is to have news from someone. Have you heard from John lately? I haven't talked to him in a while. So these phrasal verbs are very different. Okay. So hear about is this hear, hear about or to hear of. Those are essentially the same, but very different from hear from, which is to, to ha receive news from someone. I haven't heard from my brother for a few, actually a few weeks. I hope he's okay because I haven't heard from him for a while. I should give him a call because I haven't heard from him lately. I haven't heard from a lot of students 
who are, who are who should be asking questions. If you have any doubts, get online and ask me at uh, com. Send in your questions and ask us, and we will answer you. Okay? It's what we're here for. We're here to help you. Okay? I've heard from some of you, but I haven't heard from all of you. So send me your questions, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So it's time to move on here with a little review. We, st- we can start today with a review of numbers, numbers up to a million. So remember what we talked about yesterday, the pronunciation, the intonation. I love intonation. I love intonation. I love intonation. I love intonation, right? It's, there's a big difference in the feel. And with numbers, it's the same. Intonation is very important. 17, 70, 16, 16, 60, 60. So not just relying on that een and t, teen and t, but use the intonation as a tool to help differentiate the the pronunciation of those types of numbers. Okay, I'm going to read quickly. I'm going to read two numbers. You're going to write them down, and you're going to read them back to me, and hopefully you'll get them all right. Okay, get your pen and paper, ladies and gentlemen. The first number, here we go, 1,624,234. And the second number... 2,864,000 Two million eight hundred and sixty four thousand two hundred and twenty one. What was that first number? Did you get that? That's right. One million two hundred and I'm sorry, one million six hundred and twenty four thousand two hundred and thirty four. And the second number? Repeat it. Yes, good. Two million eight hundred and sixty four thousand two hundred and 21. Good job. We looked at, in the last class, we also looked at the accusative, the accusative structure. So this is essentially where we say, I want you to study. Subject, want, direct, object, to, infinitive. I want you to study. I want you to work hard. I want you to learn. Okay? I want you to practice this form. I want you to master it. Do you want me to speak in English or do you want me to speak in Spanish? Would you like, do you you want me to speak in English? I thought so, yes. All my students want me to speak in English and I want you to speak in English as well. I want you to understand me. I want you to make the effort. So please never, never say, I want that you. Oh, I get a headache when I hear that. Don't make me get a headache, people. I want you to say this right. I want you to say it correctly. I want you to master. You gotta dominar. I want you to master this form. Give me a full answer. Do you want your family to be happy? En voz alta, conmigo. Yes, I want my family to be happy. Do I want you to speak English or Spanish? I want you to speak English, of course. Does Batman want Robin to help him? Remember Robin, his sidekick, his assistant? Does Batman want Robin to help him? Of course. Batman wants Robin to help him. Does Ben want Jerry to make more ice cream? You know, Ben and Jerry. Does Ben want Jerry to make more ice cream? Yes. Ben wants Jerry to make more ice cream. Does Zapatero want Rajoy to retire? I don't actually, I, don't, I have no idea. I don't know, but maybe. Give me an affirmative answer. Yes, Zapatero wants Rajoy to retire. All right, I suppose. Translation. Oh, yeah, little translation. Little translation. Let's do this quick. I'm going to give you three sentences in Spanish. I want you to give them to me in English. And I just use the, I want you to give them to me in English. Okay. Quiero que lo busques. Right. I want you to look for it. Good. Él quiere que yo lo busque. He wants me to look for it. He wants me to look for it. Remember, buscar, to look for. He wants me to look for it. And finally, quiero que el resto de la gente sepa la verdad. It's true. I want the rest of the people to know the truth. 
I want the rest of the people to know the truth. That's right. Yes, I do. Expression of the day. Yes. Yes, that's right, folks. It's time for the expression of the day. State of the art. Moderno. In, in, in English, we can say state of the art. Uh, they, they built this new, um, in oh, the part of Madrid I live in, I live in the Canal area, and they've built the new Teatro de Canal, which is a, apparently a state of the art theater. It has all the modern facilities. Right in Beijing for the for the Olympic Games, they had state of the art everything. It was state of the art. It was just cutting edge technology. We can say cutting edge, absolutely, completely new, modern, modern technology, state of the art, and that's your expression of the day, ladies and gentlemen. State of the art. This is a state of the art radio show. This is a state of the art way to learn English, isn't it? Radio, television, uh, mobile phone content, and online. It's a state of the art English course. It really is. I mean, have you ever even heard of a more modern course? Because I haven't. This is completely state of the art, what we're doing here with Baugan Inglés 4.0. I hope you appreciate it. And I hope you take advantage of it, folks. All right. Uh, here we are in class 10, and we're talking about things that we do. Un dia sí, un dia no. Un dia sí y otro no. Every other day. So we can say every other week. We can also say every two weeks. But it's very common to say every other week, every other month, every other year. Every two years. Do you know that the Olympics are actually every other year? And you're going to say, no, they're not, Kyle. They're every four years. But no, you're wrong. I'm right. The, the Olympics are every other year. But uh, because there are summer Olympics and winter Olympics. And for me, being a Canadian, the winter Olympics are very important. And in fact, they're in my country this year. They're in Canada and Vancouver. They're going to be fantastic. The Winter Olympics, they're every other year. Well, the Olympics are every other year. Every other Olympic Games, every other Olympics is is uh, summer. Every other Olympics is winter. So we have winter, summer, winter, summer. Winter Olympics, two years. Summer Olympics, two years. Every other week. Every other week, they collect recyclables. In my hometown, back in Canada, the recyclables... The um, beverage containers, for example, plastics and so on, beverage containers are collected every other week, every 14 days. Whereas in Madrid, people throw their recyclables with like their garbage out every night. And in fact, I'm not lying. In my hometown, the garbage, it used to be collected weekly, every week. But now, believe it or not, the normal garbage is collected every other week in my town, which is a very small town. But the garbage is collected every other week, which means you have to go 14 days. So you don't keep the garbage necessarily in your house because it would stink. But people have big bags and big bins and containers and often outdoor and a bin and like a receptacle outside where they put their garbage. So they kind of like the big, well, the big bins you have on the street in Madrid. We have those for our, you know, a bin or a something similar. And you can put your garbage in a giant, in a big bag and you seal it up. And every few days you put it outside in this area. And every two weeks, every other week, the garbage truck comes around and picks up the garbage. So I think on one week, it's the garbage, and the next week, it's the recyclables, and they alternate. My hair grows very slowly. So I, I get my hair cut every other month. I get it cut every two months. Every other month. It's true. I go about eight weeks between haircuts. I cut my hair every other month. I also buy olive oil. I buy olive oil. Aceite. Olive oil. Olive oil with the V pronounced, olive oil. I buy olive oil every other month. I eat pasta every other day. I eat a lot of pasta. I go out in Madrid 
every other every other month probably. I don't go out late. I go out late and stay out kind of late at night probably every other month. I don't like staying out late as as much as I used to when I was young. Yeah, I get I study Spanish every other day. I go to the gym every other day. I try to work out every other day, every second day. Un día sí, un día no. I go to the center of Madrid probably every other week. I'm a foreigner. I have to go to the center. I've noticed that Spanish people don't really like to go to the center quite as much as the foreigners do. The foreigners always want to go to the center. It's true. Vocabulary of the day. All right, time for the vocabulary of the day. That's right. How do you say confundir? Confundir. To confuse. To confuse. Do you, do you get confused? Do you get confused with these verbs in English? Do you get confused? I get confused sometimes. I get confused. I get mixed up. Me lío. I get, I get mixed up sometimes with ser and estar. I get confused between the two. I also get confused. I also get mixed up with por and para sometimes. It's because it's confusing. It is. It's confusing. The difference between por and para is confusing. Think about it. It's confusing. Resbalizo. Slippery. 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 Very good. Silbar. How do you say silbar in English? To whistle. To whistle. That's right. To whistle. Ya era hora. It was about time. Repeat with me. It was about time. Mejillones. How do you say that? Mejillones. Muscles. 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 M-U-S-S-E-L-S. Not like musculos, which is M-U-S-C-L-E-S, but this is M-U-S-S-E-L-S. Muscles. Do you like muscles? Do you like clams? I like clams and I like mussels. Oh, no, we're running out of time. Nevertheless, we have time to review however and nevertheless. So we have a ne if we have a negative idea, nevertheless, a positive idea. I was sick. Nevertheless, I went to the concert. Now, if we have a positive idea, we follow positive, however, negative. Okay. So, a few examples here. We had, um, well, for example, it was raining. We went to the park. So, insert the appropriate word. It was raining. Nevertheless, we went to the park. I felt great. I couldn't run the marathon. I felt great. However, I couldn't remember. Sorry, I couldn't run the marathon. All right. Well, guys, we're completely out of time. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for listening. So we are going to finish there. I hope you remember the expression of the day, state of the art. Thank you for listening to today's state of the art radio show. And I'll see you soon. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>